Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday night segment of The Outer Realm. We are broadcasting live on United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM from the beautiful city of New Orleans. We are fully sponsored by the good folks over at Folgers Coffee, who have been with us from day one. So thank you, Folgers. Also, big thank you to Dr. Snick, a.k.a. Justin Snicker, for his sponsorship of our intro and outro. He is an award-winning composer of Halloween, horror, sci-fi, and dark wave electronic music, which can be found just about Anywhere good music can be found. You will notice that tonight we are minus Amelia Pisano, a.k.a. Bubbles. Having internet issues seems to be an ongoing thing, but you will find her in chat on UFO Paranormal. So if you'd like to interact, get yourselves over there and interact with her. Uh, We will be posting her questions up from the chat room as they become available. Uh, We do have eight different platforms here for the chat, which, of course, is UFO Paranormal Radio. Of course, we've got uh, International Public Radio. We've got numerous um, Facebook news on the flip side, UFO Paranormal, Outer Realm, of course, Canada's Most Haunted, Joe Montaldo, UFO Undercover, UFO Paranormal. Uh, I think I said that one already. Uh, Anyway, we see them all here in chat, so please just go ahead and... uh, you know, light her up. We'll get to you for sure. Tonight, we have a really special woman coming on. I I just love what she does. Her name is Ellie Molina. She's going to be discussing how she teaches parents and children to harness their intuition and basically develop the intuition, harness skills such as remote viewing and telepathy, which is kind of cool, you know, telekinesis, all that fun stuff. It just sounds kind of cool, but you think to yourself, God, you know, kids are kind of young to be doing it, but Apparently, she says no, and she's going to be uh, talking about that with us, which sounds pretty exciting. So chat room is already lighting up. Yeah, Bubbles in the house. There she is. So we've got Janie. We've got, um, okay, Josh. Hi, Josh. Michelle Millen. So it's definitely starting. Wayne, hello, hello. So fantastic. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to read again her her bio. So again, she is paving the way with research and background and education to teach children and their parents to trust their intuition and develop conscious awareness. She's creating cutting edge programs that can harness the skills like remote viewing, telepathy, telekinesis, things of that nature, and it can be applied to everyday life. Hmm. We I think we'll all learn a thing or two there. She is a former university adjunct. I think I got that right. And highly recognized educator. Ellie holds a master's degree in linguistics from NYU and has been educating for four decades. She's appeared on network TV discussing intuitive development in children. She is the founder of Psy Kids, where children and adults learn to develop trust and utilize their psychic and intuitive abilities. While residing in Washington State, Ellie co-founded a private school for children where children learn to use more of their minds in a very different manner. She is a creator of Mind Power Consulting and Psy Kids. Ellie teaches and guides you to work with your own powerful intuitive abilities while introducing you to mind power techniques. My God, this sounds like a mouthful, but I know, Amelia, I love Ellie, right? Don't you wish we had somebody like Ellie growing up? I mean, I was fortunate because, you know, my mother was really good about things like that. If I say, you know, hey, man, I have like an imaginary friend, she'd be the kind to take out photos and say, okay, do you recognize anybody in these pictures? You know, could be, you know, deceased love or a loved one, family member. Um, but I was never told that it was silly 
because that was just that'd be enough to deter children. And if you get into any trouble, they don't feel safe in coming to talk to you about it. So not really good. Uh, Zach, man. Hey, Zach. Uh, excited for this guest. Can't wait to hear the info she will share. Nor I, actually. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, Adriana. So hello, Tamara. There we go. Gang's all here filling in. There we go. All we need now is Mel. But um, we'll just wait for her to come on, bring her on, and figure out how she got started in all of this, which just, I'm sure, is a fascinating story because she's accredited like crazy. So I think, just check the email, make sure it went through, because that would be terrible. Oh, there she is. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I can't complain. <laughs> I'm sitting here with you <laughs> and all of all of our fine people just lining up in the chat room. And oh, um, nice. yeah, we've got eight different platforms coming in. So um, there's going to be a lot of questions. My co-host Amelia has internet issues. So she'll be posting questions from chat. So every now and then I'll just pop them up. So you'll, you'll, okay. you're going to still have the two of us at you. So <laughs> oh, I love your background. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Honestly, we just, we've really been excited about it. As soon as I started just reading everything off, Amelia chimed in and goes, I love Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there we go. Uh, there we go. So, all right. I think I'm up to date with everyone. So um, this is a really unusual thing that you do. And I say that because working in the field of the paranormal per se, which is where I started and branched out into many things, parents seem to be the culprit when children are intuitive and they are seeing things and they're, they're being told things like, don't be silly, that's not real. Then sometimes, you know, you get malevolent, more malevolent things coming in or not so nice spirit uh, and they get in trouble. They don't feel safe enough to go and speak to their parents about it. So I'm really curious to find out. Everybody's chiming in saying, oh, my God, yeah, we're waiting, just dying to hear what you have to say. What put you on the path to this specific field? Because it's, it's just amazing. Uh, I really do believe that most of this, the things that the paths that we choose have to do with our personal experience, how we come into the world. And when I was very young, I had very strange experiences. I recall the first experience around four years old. I had, I walked with a dead woman who at six and held her hand as we walked down the street. And I asked her, I said, you know, I thought you were dead. And she said, well, the dead walk, I mean, this was not the language a six year old uses. Only right. the <laughs> language was the dead walk among us only few can see. And so wow. one thing led to another. And I told my parents and my mom was really, my mom was cool with it. My father was uh, your imagination, your imagination. <laughs> Mine too, yeah. And yeah. Uh, then by the time I was 12, my mother just handed me Linda Goodman's sun signs. And this is back in the day when we had to do astrology by hand. We would get an ephemeris and cast a chart. So by the time I was 12, I was really indoctrinated into the occult. And I mean, this is back in the day. And, right. you know, and I did a lot. I have to tell you, my, in one hand, my parents were very encouraging because I did have a TV set when I was 10 in my room. <laughs> and we're talking in the 60s, right? And I got to watch Alfred Hitchcock, uh, One Step Beyond the Twilight Zone. And that was my that was my nightly viewing. I love that. <laughs> I love it. But that's the, that's pretty much what paved the way <laughs> to uh, to where you are today. It was. It really was. And then uh, things took a more conservative path. I mean, it wasn't cool to be psychic. And I was psychic. And I was telepathic and I did use all of these tools with my friends, not all of them, just the ones that wanted to play with me, play telepathy. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I went into a regular career, you know, I chose something very normal, which was teaching because I do love to teach. 
And it was in the classroom back in the 80s where I would see the kids were doing activities that were very telepathic. And so in my, I had a lot of leeway back in the days, early days of teaching. And on Fridays, I would call it game day. So anything that we would do that had something to do with language arts, as long as it was a game, whether it's Scrabble or memory or anything at all that the kids, this is middle school. So we would play these games. And before long, I noticed, wow, these kids were like really telepathically connecting to each other. So then I started playing telepathic games. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that then by, um, it was always there. And then by 2000 and really by 2005, I think it was when the secret came out. Now mm -hmm. I was teaching in New York city. And at that time, then I said, okay, if the secret is out, then, um, I'm going to go do this in the classroom. And I wasn't, right. it was still very conservative. It was affirmations, law of attraction, all of this. And, I had a very open administrator and the kids were scoring really high on the language arts. And these are interesting things because we did um, English language assessments and our scores, my classes scores came in really high. So it was one of those stand and deliver moments where what are you doing in the classroom, Melina, with these kids? Mm -hmm. And I was doing affirmations, we're doing these affirmations and the test scores were high. And so she said, okay, you know what, we're going to give you the opportunity to do an enrichment program called the power to create. This is New York city, middle, you know, middle school. So I created a program, the power to create, and I took it one step beyond meaning, okay, not only are we doing affirmations, but we're going to do remote viewing. We're going to do telepathy. We're really going to start to use our mind in a very different manner. And oh. well, that's where it all started, really. And how do the parents feel about that? Because I think my mom would have been cool with it because her side of the family is really intuitive. So was my father's. He just would never talk about it until I was much older. But um, was it well received? Because, I mean, a lot of parents are just like, oh, that's not a thing. You know, you're being silly to, to think that you're seeing things. It, it's, you just didn't talk about things like that back then. Right. It's like well, a, the family secret. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But by 2005, when I was doing it, the way that I was approaching remote viewing and telepathy, it was so scientific, basically. So right. that it was, I always like to bring in the neuroscience as much as possible into this so right. that it's not it's not in that space of like, oh, woo, woo. I mean, we know that it's, we know that so much of this can be explained scientifically now. And right. so that is where I went with it back there. And mm -hmm. so the parents, parents were okay. They were fine. As long as their kids were producing and getting better grades in school, it was okay. It was an enrichment program. Mm -hmm. So that's not, that's not, and the right. people that come to me, Michelle, uh, they are the people that, and it was an enrichment program. So they had to ask for parental, um, um, they had to ask, they had to right. choose. So the people that come to me are really, they want the work. Um, people who are not into this work, they're not going to mm -hmm. come. They're not mm -hmm. even going to look twice. Right. Well, I, I would imagine that would be attributed to um, religious backgrounds, belief systems, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Did you run into any resistance with really hardcore, you know, people with hardcore religious backgrounds? No, no. The only, place the <laughs> so only place, I know seriously, the only place I've ever seen it are on uh, YouTube comments. All right. Where oh. people will be commenting in, and I don't read the comments any longer after I saw that, but I uh, remember I was doing a podcast and I was a guest and the comments were that this is the work of the devil. And I don't even know if those were real comments or if those were just bots, like trying to stir up trouble because right. in my personal life, I've never encountered anyone to say, well, that's the devil's work. And you know, that that's not, those are no. not the people that I've ever attracted. So. That's pretty hardcore stuff for sure. Um, we have a question in chat. Here we go. I, I guess, yeah, I guess we should be explaining some of this for those who, who don't know. So what's telepathy or remote viewing? Maybe we can break down telepathy, remote viewing, and telekinesis okay. and just okay. to get everybody on board. Right. So we have a common language. So we'll start yes. with we'll start with remote viewing. 
Okay. Uh, remote viewing does not require any psychic skills or intuition other than training. So anybody and everybody can do remote viewing. And remote viewing is being able to see over distance, time, and space without our actual eyesight. So we can put blinders on or these blind, we can put blindfolds on and we're not even. And then we can look at a target, meaning a number is usually given in remote viewing. In the remote viewing community, the way that it works is that uh, the viewer, the person who's going to look over time, distance, and space is mm -hmm. given a it. And that's just in the training. I mean, in real life, you know, somebody's going to say, hey, look for my look for my lost cat. And I'm not going to have a target with a number, but then I'll go into this. I call it going into the zone. So I right. go into the zone and then I'll go into an alpha state, which is a reduced brainwave state. And then in that reduced brainwave state, I am able to see over time, distance, and space, and mm -hmm. see, I get impressions, and then I either draw them down, or I write it, or I record, and then we, okay, if it's a lost cat, when the cat gets found, then we get to have confirmation, but if it's an if it's an activity that I'm doing with the children, well, their confirmation is then when I do the target reveal, which is to right. show them what the target was. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then, and then telepathy is just the transference of thought over time, distance, and space. So, for example, I don't remember his name. Jose was that? Oh, uh, Josh. Yeah, Josh. Okay, Josh. Oh, no. yeah, that's okay. Uh, so when he, when you are thinking about somebody, and then they call you, or you're thinking about them, and they call you like 25, 30 minutes later. So that was right. a telepathic connection, and we're. Right. Still most people are still going to the space of, oh, wow, that was so weird. Well, there's really nothing weird about it. That is how we are connecting with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not weird. You know, you could be thinking about somebody and then they, an email from them pops up at that exact moment in your inbox. So that right. is. And right. then telekinesis is being able to move objects without touching your hands over time, over space, just dis over distance. Right. And um, again, there are different forms of telekinesis. So for example, a spoon bending, mm -hmm. you have to touch, unless you're Uri Geller, I don't know anyone who does not touch the spoon. And I mean, right. I think Uri touches the spoon and then it bends. But for the most part, what happens is we know that a spoon is very strong unless you picked up some really cheap spoon and you're cheating and then that right. doesn't count. But with a spoon that is really um, thick, then when we go into a deeper alpha state, the spoon will bend. And then once it becomes malleable, it doesn't undo. You cannot undo it. Right. So unless you force it. And so that would be telekinesis. There, there are other forms of telekinesis, like with the children that I worked with, mm -hmm. only three of them were able to move dominoes. Okay. And they would, the do, with their, the domino, it would just, it, it fell. It took time, mm -hmm. it fell a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people who do um, telekinesis with spirals. They can make spirals move. That all counts too. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Right. May, similar with uh, some people will train maybe using a flame by putting mm -hmm. it out. Same yeah. idea. Uh, Josh says, is this real telekinesis? Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. so this just reminds me. One of the things that I was practicing, I, I forgot about this one already. When I <laughs> when I practice, I was using an LED flashlight to to turn on an LED flashlight with my mind. Oh, and there we go. So, and so what uh, what we were doing, and I say we because it was a bunch of us, we take you take the LED flashlight and then you adjust it so that it is off, but not tight off. Obviously, it's got to be a little loose, but not loose enough so that uh, that anything around you can shake it. But it's got to right. be loose. And then you put the LED flashlight somewhere where you're not going to touch it and then you focus on it mm -hmm. and. I did it before going to bed and then it turned on in my face and that's how I knew that it worked. Okay. This is my right. Like, right. <laughs> Everything else was dark and I focused on the flashlight and I've only done it twice. Right. Uh, and um, but then again, cause 
sometimes Michelle, I'll say to myself, well, why am I doing this? Okay. So why am I spending my energy and my time turning on the flashlight? Okay. You did it twice. Check. All right. Now That's maybe done. you'll do something that will be manifesting something of more importance, maybe help to heal somebody. Cause it, again, telekinesis is that you can use that for remote healing, the same thing for remote mm -hmm. viewing. We can use that for healing. So I always look to use these techniques for something of a higher consciousness. So the phenomena allows me and the children that I'm working with to realize how powerful we are. And it is a wonderful feeling to know how powerful you are. It's kind of like imagine walking across a bed of hot coals without burning your feet. And it's then like it, a superpower. It is. <laughs> All and kinds, it, right. It is. And when you, when a person can bend a spoon or see over time, distance, and space and get the answer correct, something happens in our bodies. We get mm -hmm. like a real adrenaline hit. And that feeling provides real empowerment. And then, you know, you look at certain things in life, you're afraid to look for a job, you're afraid mm -hmm. to speak up. Why? Why would you be afraid to do that when your mind is so powerful that you just created, you just did all of these wonderful things. That's so true. I use the phenomena to teach consciousness and to raise conscious awareness. So the phenomena mm -hmm. of spoon bending and psychic abilities. Yes, we raise our consciousness. We empower, we get empowered. We feel really mm -hmm. great. We realize how powerful we are, and then we get to use it for things that are more important in life. Right, right. Uh, I love it. The remote viewing we're very familiar with, so that's awesome. Uh, would you say remote viewing is out of body? I'll read off the questions for those who are actually just listening tonight and who aren't on YouTube. So is it like an out of body experience? I guess he's asking. Yeah, yeah it can be. Uh, not necessarily, though. It depends mm -hmm. on the remote viewer. All right. It really can be. It can be an out of body experience where the because there are remote viewers who have gone to the location out of body. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. OK, great. And can people levitate? But some through your mind. Well, some here's, people the do. Thing. Well, here's the thing. I have never seen anyone levitate for real, but mm -hmm. I do remember many years ago when I started studying transcendental and I'm dating myself many, many, many years ago when I started studying transcendental meditation um, through the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, there were people who claimed and they had a film. I don't, that was before we had Photoshop. So there were films then that showed a group of people who had been doing transcendental meditation, levitating. And like I said, this was before, this is before Photoshop and, uh, you know, the ability to manipulate all of the, the films like that. So I've never seen anyone levitate in my lifetime. Do mm -hmm. I believe it's possible? Yeah, I do. I think it just takes a lot of practice and really reaching a certain level of uh, it, it is. Yeah, I think it's like, yeah, of consciousness zenning. I mean, you have, you know, Tibetan monks who have been said to be able to do it. But I mean, that's, I mean, you have to think about the type of, you know, work that they're doing. They're doing this every single day for hours a day to reach mm -hmm. a certain level of consciousness. I imagine, you know, we are spiritual beings and having a human experience. So I imagine we really could. Um, take it to the next limit for sure. Uh, Co-host Emilia Bizano, what kind of effect does this work have on you physically? There we go. Oh, no question oh bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> it depends, uh, depends on what kind of work you're doing. So, for example, physically, when I'm doing a lot of remote viewing, mm -hmm. um, I get tired. Yes. So, because I am in a different state, in a different zone. Mm. But at the same time, when the remote views are hit, I always feel very alive. So, and again, when we're doing the work, we do spend some time, we do spend a lot of time in alpha and in deeper beta, you know, deeper brainwave states. So it can also be very meditative. 
I mean, here's what I've heard. I've heard a lot of, and I don't know if this is true. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, psychics pick up all this energy. And so it affects the body and you have to do this and you have to do that. And that may all be very, very true. So when we do the work, we, when I do the work, we, I always start with a prayer. Now, again, this is different with the children when I'm working with the children, because I'm not going to get involved with their particular religious beliefs, mm -hmm. but we do work with protecting ourselves and, um, putting white light around us and working in the, in working in white light. Mm -hmm. So in terms of how does that affect me physically? Um, I don't know. Right. I think you just get so conditioned to doing it. You just soldier through, you know, um, you know, I, I, I mean, for, for me, any work that I do energy wise, I found I'm, I'm very dehydrated after though. Mm -hmm. um, she also has another question. This one actually came first, but I'm trying to just keep it all in tune. So how do you deal with the naysayers? That's a good question. Uh, okay, thank you. So here's what happened over the years. I've been doing this for a long time. In the beginning, I would fire hose them, meaning, no, no, this is true. Let me convince you. This is the way that it is. And people can really do this. And now I don't say anything. It's like, okay, if you, because it really comes down to if you don't believe it's possible, then it's not going to be possible because yeah. it won't be there for you. Right. So Mind, I, mindset. Yeah. I don't even deal with naysayers anymore. Um, it's, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's not for them. It's either for you or it's not for you. And if it's not for you, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. There are other things for you. Move along. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. Go. Move along. Yeah, it's not for everybody, right? That's why you have so many different, I do it, different things. Uh, on the I do it nicely, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Trish is one of the other hosts here on the network, and she has peace of mind Monday nights. I think this happens often in the paranormal investigations by the living by accident because so many are focusing on the light ball, et cetera. Yeah, I, I think, again, mindset. Mind you, I think it's it's like um, psychokinesis also projecting energy and doing like amazing things that way. Mm -hmm. People don't even realize they can do that. Mm -hmm. I always say it's easier for people to think there's something coming out of the woodwork at them than it is for them to actually believe that they're powerful enough to project their own energy and create all kinds of amazing things going on in their space. Um, can, Josh, I tell a, can I tell yes. a story about that really quickly? Yes, when you may. I, okay, when I was growing up, uh, my best friend at that time was going through a with her family was going through a difficult time. And again, we were, we were in the realm. We were playing telepathy, if you want to call it. And we were doing all kinds of these. And when she would go into the kitchen, cupboards would open and the refrigerator, now, the refrigerator would open. Okay. Of but all the, things. <laughs> yeah. the cupboards would open and her parents got freaked out. And then, uh, they did some investigating. I don't know who they contacted. I really don't remember. But I do remember my friend saying to me, my parents think it's all of my excess energy and that I, my energy, the energy in my body is creating all of this and that this is what happens when kids go into this these teen years. And right. I said, you know, okay, son, what do I know? As a kid, we were both kids. Like, <laughs> good to me, right? Oh, can you do that like at will? <laughs> Sounds great. Let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. No caution to the wind. <laughs> yeah. No, why not? Why not? I think kids are daring. I think, you know, they take more chances than we as adults take. That's for darn sure. Uh, okay, Joshua, has remote viewers, remote extraterrestrials? Uh, some of them. Bases? Yeah, some of them have, yes. And um, again, there have been a lot of, there's a lot, it depends on the remote viewing community. So the remote viewing community, and, and I'm going to assume, Michelle, that you probably had some real cool remote viewers on, you know, at some, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, specifically. <laughs> yeah. So, Depends on the community and who's doing what. So the answer is yes. Okay. Right. Um, 
I'm going to share something again, my own personal experience. I do psychic readings and I don't know if that's, if that came, if that's part of my bio or not, but I do readings Excellent. and there, there have been times where, you know, I'll be doing a reading for someone and I'll see aliens and then you know, I'll go in and I'll explain, this is what I'm seeing and this is the message that I'm getting. And now this is always a question that I ask myself because I'm also very analytical. Be the person that I'm reading for, it happen, turns out then that they're into aliens as opposed. Right. And so is that why I'm seeing and connecting with aliens? Because of, you know, I ask myself these questions. I sure. just give the information You're logical. to- Right. I yeah. am logical. I am. And I'm analytical. And then there yes. are other clients that I work with who are heavily, um, who have deep belief in angels and, yeah. um, and then I see angels. So it's just, it's an interesting experience. It is. And, and there's a huge belief that they're one in the same. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's you right. know, so it, it's, it is really difficult to, to gauge, I really do think it goes um, with the belief of the individual. Uh, Amelia, how do you recharge? <laughs> Wine? <laughs> Wine works all for me. <laughs> no. I, either, I either sleep, right, or I go out into nature. I go, I go for walks. I have to nature. go for a walk. Grounding mm -hmm. then, because yes, you, you ground in, in nature, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, Question, when I remote view, I am always drawn to one person. Why am I always drawn to this one person? I don't know, but I'm going to speculate. Perhaps you have a karmic connection from past lives or something. Right. And that's just, you know, otherwise, you know, we have all of these wonderful karmic connections and not so wonderful karmic connections. And so if somebody's constantly coming into your, into your, zone there's got to be a connection that you two have from or that you have with this particular person from either a past life or even maybe another dimension right now while we're still here because there are parallel universes and dimensions going on yes yes i agree 100 percent on that also amelia says i break electronics yes you do oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, you do. Okay. Dave's going to be that guy on the show tonight. Um, hi, Ellie. Remote viewing. What's under the ice in Antarctica? Lost continent pyramids. Yes. Uh, I don't do So I'm sorry to, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm not <laughs> that kind of remote viewer. Uh, I can tell you what I've read. Okay. <laughs> and what some of the other remote viewers um, have found and say, you know, Ingo Swan, Ingo Swan, who's credited for being the father of remote viewing, uh, he saw incredible things on the far side of the moon. And again, this is not where I put my energy into any of these. Uh, I would love to go do some remote viewing on Gopeki Tepe, is the um, yes. archaeological place in Turkey. Yes. I just haven't sat down to do it but um that would be the only place that is really calling to me turkey calls to me psychically and so that would be a place that i would consider remote viewing and then even going to could be past life too could be. Um, can you ask them to put michelle sleep the et's <laughs> I just belly ache and they usually I scare them off and they come back. I'm like either just like tell me what you want now, buzz off, let me fall asleep, then take me. <laughs> I want to feel like I'm getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> so um uh, Josh again, when we die, where does our spirit or soul go? Josh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the inquiring minds want to know. At least the chat room is responsive. <laughs> So, I have my own theories, right? That's about yes. that's about all. That I don't know. I haven't died right. and come back yet, and so I'm just thinking we're energy, and so we just weren't either turn into another form of energy. I really don't have an answer, but I'm curious, and if anybody <laughs> does, I want to know. He says, "At least you're honest." <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Exactly. It's a loaded question for sure. So let's get back then to working um, with children. Children tend to be natural psychics. You know, people mm -hmm. say animals and children 
are natural psychics. And then some children will lose it if it's not nurtured mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others will just excel. Right. 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 So how, mm -hmm. how do you know which ones that, um, I mean, I'm sure there are tests you can do, but is there something that you can see in a child right off the bat and know, Ooh, here's a loaded one that we have to nurture as opposed to some that just resist it. They may fear it. You know, you have to pull it out of them. Okay, so uh, those are the children that I don't work with, all right? right. So, um, so again, here's the thing. It's not that. It's just that the kids who come to me, they don't. They have to come at this point in the game. They, and even before I was teaching at a private school, they have to come because their parents want them to have it. So the right. parents have some level of wanting it. Now, if the child right. is resistant and they're only in the program and – when I'm doing a program or I have my aunt, they're only in there because the parent wants it. You know, this is not going to work. So right. it's the parent wants it more because the parent wants it. And then they want their child to be psychic. Not that the kid is psychic, right? But then they want their child to have developed all of these psychic skills and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And it's wonderful, but the child has to be a willing participant. It's kind of like dragging your kid to piano lessons and then, <laughs> yeah. right. and then the kid won't yeah. play or the kid won't practice. But the best results are always when the children are open and mm -hmm. the parents say, hey, you know, we want to we want to do this with our children. And I work together with parents and kids and the right. kids are open. And then the results are just phenomenal, just phenomenal. And then. Mm -hmm. Getting the phenomenal results encourage the children, right? It's like you do well, you get good results, you feel empowered, you feel confident, you want to do it again. Right. And so that's really how it works. And for those children who um, don't want to do it at all, well, there's just so much resistance that there's no point. And then right. with children who come in who want to do it, but then they're afraid that they can't do it then obviously we're gonna we have conversations about that like i said a lot of the work that i do is raising consciousness raising awareness mm -hmm. even teaching children really early about what it looks like to create these stories that we tell ourselves of limiting beliefs and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of emotional intelligence that goes into working in this realm mm -hmm. doesn't do, but that's my take on it you know i mm -hmm. really I really work on emotion, developing emotional intelligence. I work on mm -hmm. developing conscious awareness and then the phenomena itself and then empowerment. Do you find that it's difficult, like it'd probably be harder to work with the parents because from the time of childhood, we're conditioned to believe certain things, maybe again, like religious standpoint, because it's drilled into you at a certain age. And it's, it's a matter of trying to separate yourself from that that core belief system of how you were raised or what you were you know again religious background do you find sometimes that it's harder to work with a parent than with a child <laughs> because of all that the child's still brand new and no, willing so here's the thing the people that come to me are right. ready and that it's a whole other crowd you know if right. i were going to go to the Catholic Church with all of the don't and anyone who's Catholic and listening to this don't do not this is not offend no offense That's taken no, no, it's okay they're oh. used they're used to it I, I do it all the time <laughs> so. we're going to go into a highly <laughs> let's say a highly yeah. religious institution yes um well I don't know that I would even be talking about these things all right I'm not sure because right. I don't go so and I'm not sure that that would be my audience so basically. The people, mm. in, again, we're attracted to people who vibrate on our frequency, right. who have interests that we have. So the people who find me are really open and they want this for themselves. They want this mm. for their kids. They they want this. This is what they want. Oh, I, I've met a lot of people who think they are more than ready. Um, you know, I deal with people every walks of life, you know, pretty much seven days a week. And as much as they want to do it and they'll, they'll work at it. Sometimes it's just trying to pull away from the core belief that always plays in the back of, of the mind, you know, as I know I've had to work with people and working with children, mm -hmm. trying to get them, um, you know, to just don't make your child feel silly. 
they're really gifted. And sometimes they're so gifted that that little beacon in the darkness that attract a lot of things and you have mm -hmm. to learn how to work with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Instead of yeah. instilling fear. So um, oh, let me see. All right. Uh, I just try to get to this. So can I don't I, fall behind. Can I oh. just go to a little, a little thing that you were saying. So yes. you work in the paranormal and um, different fields, but yeah. Paranormal okay. So well. then, I'm going to just assume, and doesn't mean, don't make a, you know, don't assume anything because yeah. you know what that means, all right? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> However, I know the old saying. <laughs> the hell, right? So um, what I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. If I'm a parent and I am very, very interested, super interested in the paranormal, then there's a high chance that my children may be seeing something because mm -hmm. that is the conversation that's going on. That is our life. Then I would be coming to someone like you. People right. from the paranormal do not find me either. They don't find right. me. Right. So that's right. the, other, and, right. So it's again, a different, a different, uh, let's call it a clientele, a different group of people that find right. me. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, yes. Trish, um, yes. Okay, yeah, so yes, I do, I do. So right now I finally created, I finally got this together. It is an online school and it is, um, ex I don't even have the, the link in my head right now, but if, you, no. a person goes to my, <laughs> if a person goes to my email at elliemolina.com and then they log into the PsyKids section, then there's a link for the school and the program is called Make Magic Happen. And this is an online psychic development intuitive program for kids and their adults, or even just for adults also. Mm -hmm. And then there's a there's the, called the midnight portal, which is the community part to it, which is where I come in once a month and teach and ask questions and interact with the members in the online school. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Your web, I put your website up on the group page too. So you guys can go oh, to the okay. outer realm and find it. And I'm sure they could feel the way uh, are in yeah, there as the well. Same. Yeah, in the side kid section, and then to go click to make magic happen. Oh, and then there also is a there's a 16 page free guide that I created for anybody who wants to start working with their children to develop their intuitive abilities, and that's called What If. It's a six it's a six ways to make magic to tap into your child's inner magic, and that's on the side kid section on the uh, website also. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, this guy's find it on the outer realm, you know where to go. Um, so what um, you say you teach them and you have lessons, is that something mm -hmm. that you can you can share with us? Um, so obviously, you start from point A and you gradually hone in and harness those skills. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you typically start? How, recognizing Focus. abilities or? No, just see, anybody can do this. We all can do this. Right. However, we need to be trained. All right. right. We need to be trained. And so where I always start, I start with kids as young as three years old. Wow. Uh-huh. Now they That's don't do, yeah, they, it, they have to progress because if they don't, you can't have, you have to have language to be able to describe what you're seeing. And yes, as of a course. three year old, you're not going to be able to pick up. Most three year olds are not super artistic enough to be able to draw what they see. So where I start with a three-year-old is in focus and concentration. And again, this is where a lot of, the, I have really cool activities in that 16 page free guide that's, that are accessible and you can start at age three. So the first thing that I always work with is focus and concentration because we are not taught. We I don't know about you, but most people have never been taught how to focus and how to concentrate and how to move your awareness intentionally from one thing to another. So mm -hmm. people are always saying, oh, you know, I multitask, I multitask and I this and I. you can't, the brain doesn't multitask and mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not focused and the awareness is not there. And so teachers, I know like, uh, you know, we were all guilty of this at some point in our lives, will say, well, why don't you just concentrate on that or focus on that? But does anybody really teach you how to focus? Does anybody teach you how to concentrate? So that's where I start. And the right. first exercise that I do with the children and the adults 
is called tucking away your body. So what does that look like to tuck away your body? It, you know, I have them sit with, I call it crisscross applesauce for children. Right. <laughs> and then put their fingers in what I call the zoot position. Those are the three. Cause then, you know, when I used to do this in physical realm, uh, mm -hmm. we would take, I would take my fingers and I would like, you know, kind of go like zoot, 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 zoot. Cause we were still allowed to touch people back then. Right. And <laughs> kids would love that. And we would call it, put your fingers in the zoot position. It made it happy. It made it relaxed. It was fun. Crisscross applesauce. And then we stare at an object. So if we had a fake candle and we're in a group of here, we start staring at a fake candle. And the idea is to start to sit quietly, tuck away your body for about, well, you try it for a minute to two minutes. Imagine a mm -hmm. three-year-old and then comes the conversation. Well, what did that feel like? We're not moving. We're not itching and scratching and fidgeting. We are absolutely sitting still. And the beauty is that, again, think about the Tibetan monks and all of the monks and the yogis. The longer that a human can sit still without moving their body, the experience has become transcendental. And so it's in this zone that I teach children how to tuck away their body to begin consciousness. And so then it becomes a transferable skill because now you can sit, you have control over your body. If you have control over your body, you have control over your emotions. And this begins the beginning of emotional intelligence. And mm -hmm. so it, the lessons start to build up on, on this. Mm -hmm. And then, we go from there, we start moving into seeing over time, distance and space again with remote viewing. And it's all tied into meditating. Not, I wouldn't call it meditating to sit at, for adults. It's meditation. All right. Cause right. we got to get into alpha through meditating, but for children, right. it's actually just sitting still. Right. Right. All righty. Um, Trish, wow, thank you. My daughter would get in trouble in school from the time she was in kindergarten for moving things with her mind and such. Teachers would call me, hold conferences, that she was a disruption to class. I would imagine that mm -hmm. that happens a lot, right? Which So that's, again, where you come in to help them focus all of that energy so they're not so, you know, I, I guess, how do, you, how do you, if they have to go to a regular school, you know, do you right. work with, yeah. No, I, I didn't. I, I taught private school and I have my own programs and no one's ever called me in to um, to work with uh, kids that were moving objects with their mind. I did work with autistic and uh, I will come circle around and ask this question, I think. Yes. It's not really well, a question. Well, yeah, it, she's, she's well, making a comment. Yeah. I will talk about that in a second. However, uh, I was I was going into schools and well one particular school and I worked with um, an integrated classroom where there were autistic and um, children with a attention deficit ADHD mm -hmm. and we would do this work there and the results were amazing but no one's ever called me in to say hey Ellie can you come in and work with these kids because they're, you know, moving objects with their minds and they can't control their abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be curious, Trish, to learn what Trish was able to do in order to help her child. Yeah, Trish, chime in. <laughs> yeah, it, it is difficult um, because you have a private school, you're in a certain area, you know, you have these kids who do have to exist in reg in a regular curriculum, regular school, uh, dealing with, I, I hate to say regular people because we're all exceptional and in, in mm -hmm. our own unique ways, but there, not everyone has an understanding of how to deal with children with these amazing mm -hmm. abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not even, and it, look, I don't want to trash education. However, mm -hmm. it's not even, it's just, so many educators are not even conscious of how to go about speaking appropriately to children. All right. So, or even, so uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of that. And I spend a lot of time working with kids with language and thought that mm -hmm. again, creates reality. The words that we speak matter. And so there's, again, that raising of consciousness. And mm -hmm. so there, 
are word like in my book, for example, children who know how to know. And there's an entire chapter devoted to language and thought and words to use, words to lose, why mm -hmm. language is important, why language creates our reality. And so I would teach this. This is part of what I teach the children also, even in the online program. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, unfortunately, there's still a large a really large percentile of the population in Western culture that doesn't believe that our thoughts create our reality and that what comes out of our mind, our mouths matters. Right. So, yeah, it, it is really difficult. She says, unfortunately, it only caused her to have self-esteem issues. So she suppresses it more at school by default, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So Trish, that'd be interesting to have her really participate in a program where she can thrive, you know, like really to, to use these abilities to hone them so that she can, she can mm -hmm. use them. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's just it. We only use and rely on our physical senses. You know, we live mm -hmm. in a physical place, it makes sense. But there's so many other abilities that naturally are there for us to use and we're just taught to suppress them or, or you know ignore them definitely suppress them, use them um so okay a whole other conversation going on in there so <laughs> okay so um please continue so um you're, you're working with these belief system what is your hope you know at the end of all this you're, you're teaching them to use their minds and these these incredible mm -hmm. abilities in a world that is just so difficult, do you think that the world is evolving to the point where these really gifted children can exist comfortably and continue being functional? <laughs> so I have to laugh. My son said, I have, I have three sons <laughs> and they're adults. And my oldest son said to me the other day, I was at, we were celebrating my grandson's third birthday and it was his first birthday party ever because of COVID. So right. we were at the birthday party and I was doing my thing. And then my son said to me later on, he goes, Oh, you live in a, you live, you live in utopia, you know, where the thing oh, is. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I said, I know I do. I do. My world is very utopian. And um, <laughs> I, my hope is that, we begin culturally to really come to terms with learning how to deal with our human potentials and that we have, that we have unlimited human potential. We are capable of incredible things that when we start to learn this at an early age and that we become confident and we can use this, we can circumvent a whole lot of problems. Uh, do I think that this will happen during my lifetime? I'm just going to keep working at it, okay? And um, not that much has changed since I began this work, but yet a lot has been changing lately. I'm going to say I started this work back in the 80s. And when, when I first started this work in the 80s, I mean, I was like from another planet. The only thing that I had going for me was a uh, stranger in a strange land. And I believed that Robert Heinlein um, knew what he was talking about and that it wasn't <laughs> science. And right. that, that was my, you know, I was like, okay, this is all real. And he's mm -hmm. hiding in a book, but all of this is real. And <laughs> right. we're going to be able to move objects and hold our breath. And we're going to be able to do all of these things. And we're going to be able to disappear in the fourth dimension. And I um, just really continued on with this belief all my life. Right. And so do I believe all these things and more are possible? Absolutely. And it's just a matter of us having conversations around it and learning how to do it and being open to learning how to do this. Mm -hmm. And what is the benefit, do you think, um, for children moving forward? Um, in doing this, well, you, I think you know, I'm more just functional gonna... adults in society, oh, <laughs> compassionate absolutely. adults. Oh, absolutely. But let's talk right. about adults first for a moment, okay? Because that's oh, where please. it starts. So, <laughs> yes. so, one of the things when when adults have these abilities, or like we're not 
adults develop these abilities. There comes an understanding that they can start to manipulate the energy field around them. So we no longer have to function in this third dimensionality. We can function through the quantum field. So you want to have, I have clients, for example, who have had incredible results, you know, jobs opening up that were almost impossible to get. I've had clients receiving green cards without ever going for an interview. Okay. Um, You know, I've had people erase debt. Okay, um, how, and some people come into large sums of money and you could say, well, how did all this happen? I don't know how it happened. We just worked through the quantum field. We know how to do this. You can train yourself to work through the third dimension. So mm-hmm. when we start to do this really young as kids and we start to gain control over our emotions and what's possible. So you know what, getting really good grades is going to be easy. If you still want to go to college, going to the college of your choice will be great. You don't have money, there will be money for you. How? By using the power of your mind and using your abilities in the quantum field, that money will come. It's called manifestation. So yes, that's what I was waiting for. (laughs) Yeah. And then we don't need to, we don't need to be working in 3D all the time. And those people who do, those people, people who choose to live in the third dimensional realm and plod through nine, you know, and Mm -hmm. believe that this is the way it is, the hamster wheel, and we can never break out and it's Groundhog Day every day. Well, Mm -hmm. that will be up to them to continue that belief. However, I do know from personal experience and working in this realm for so many years, there's another way. Right. You know this too. Mm-hmm. Right. I do. I do. And I think that's where people struggle is the manifestation part. They just can't seem to get away from, I, I, I just think it's just everyday, everyday life conditioning. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, you, you work, you work, you work, you work. You don't really, you're not really allowed the time. They don't want you to think. <laughs> they don't want you to think. They don't want you to use these abilities, right? So, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we can look at the entire the entire look at schools as an inst. It's an institution. So that is what a school is an institution, and it is geared to produce certain results. It's a political machine, and it that's how it runs. Exceptional people and worker bees. That's right. Exceptional mm-hmm. people will get pushed one way. Worker bees will get pushed another way. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, Tamara, we don't use all of our brains. So the question is, what would be the results of using the full capacity of our brains? I have no idea, but could you imagine? We probably wouldn't need our bodies. <laughs> no, it's true. Just whew, evolve into uh, probably we hit six or 70 at that point. <laughs> and do you remember in, I don't know if you've ever read Tamara, um, Masters of the Far East. Um, it's a six volume book. It's about these masters in the Far East who just, they leave their bodies. They have out of body experiences. They travel telepathically. They tele- they do teleportation. And supposedly the book is real. It's also not real, but say, you know, people have said that these experiences in the book were based on, on true accounts. However, the author had to hide this. So he created a fictional, fictional account. Um, but if you ever read Masters of the Far East, some of these, you know, this is what's possible if we start using more of our minds in a different way. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, Amelia, have you ever communicated with another remote viewer while at the same location? Have I ever communicated with I'll remote? leave it up for you. <laughs> there. Um, if you can see it. Well, I'm not quite sure I understand. Um, okay, so I just did a remote view. I'm part of a um, an experimental group right now, and there are a few of us, and we're participating in remote views. And so the target did an, an outbounder exper- exper- experiment, which is where the t- he went to a location at a certain time, a certain date, and we were then to remote view where he went and right. we had incredible accuracy and hits. So is that communicating with him? Um, yes and not really. Yes and no, I don't know. There is since there's no time or space. I, 
Um, All right. So maybe I want to elaborate on the question a little bit more. Do you need her to do that? As that might help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hold on. Oh, there's a whole bunch more there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe so, elaborate on that one just a little bit more, Amelia, if you don't mind. Um, that would be telepathic experience, Michelle, you know, like if we're having a telepathic experience, yeah, that's, right. that's totally possible and, and happens all, all the time. Right. Right. Oh, she goes, oh, there we go. Okay. Two remote viewers at the same location, not on purpose. So going, are you viewing to the same location? I guess. And you, you show mean, up like, at the same um, place. Oh, you know what? I haven't had, see, look, I want to just get really clear on, on something. I do not spend um, not as much time remote viewing as remote viewers. Okay, right. I I work in a different field. I'm a consultant and I and I'm and a psychic and I teach children and their parents um, right. how to develop their abilities. Now I have an entire community that I'm associated associated with that are remote viewers, and yes, they have seen each other at the same location, not on purpose, and right. they've reported back. They've reported these these um, experiences back. Yes. Right. Okay. It's very Got cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Got that one. Okay. Uh, there's another Josh. I don't know if, if this will apply, but do you have a theory on shadow people since I still see them to this very day? No, I, Luce, I see shadow people also. I do not know, but I don't know where they, where they come from, but I do see shadow people. I have always seen shadow people and right. The only thing that I've noticed, Luce, this is my personal experience, is that when I'm more stressed, I see shadow people than when I'm when I'm not stressed. Mm, that's I interesting. Know, I don't. That's been my experience. Right. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of theories with them. Extraterrestrials. Sometimes some people believe mm -hmm. they're associated with Men in Black. Some people believe that they're demonic. Some people believe that they're time travelers. But that's that's an interesting that's an interesting observation that you when you get stressed you see them so that's mm -hmm. that's interesting as to what would attract them. Um, I definitely need to use my intuition to get more money to pay off my debts. What are some tips that Ellie would recommend? Take her course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I would recommend that you do is go to my website and download the magic mantra and then follow that to a T, okay? Because then you will manifest money. Manifest money. And Zach, can I make a pitch on my podcast? On yes, of course. March 20, on March 23rd, my guest is Mark Uton Houghton. And Mark is a multiple lottery winner and game winner. So he wins, he lives now, He multiple lotteries. And so he does this through manifestation. So if you there we get go. Yeah, yeah. There go seek you. Ellie out. They can <laughs> so if they go to your website, they should be able to hook on to your podcast yeah, as well. Find the, find the magic mantra. Yeah, the magic mantra is on my website. And okay. then um, my podcast is not on. It's just ask Ellie intuitive. Oh, okay. But you could Google okay, it and guys. It'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Uh, Tamara says, I've read a lot of Middle Eastern yogis and monks and their beliefs and training. So she's going to look up that information of the books that you made mention of. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. So well, it sounds, it sounds uh, really interesting. The power of manifestation, multiple lottery winner. Most people would say, oh, you can't do that. That's not a thing. Um, but clearly it's a thing. <laughs> so we oh, can add it is a thing. It's absolutely yeah. a thing. And right. um, Mark has done it and he's turned it into a business. He teaches it now how to do that. And my clients have, my clients, the ones that I work with have manifested incredible amounts of money through them, just using the magic mantra. It's a belief. It's a belief. Right. Right. Um, in fact, okay. when you want to work on your beliefs. Okay that's what I always say mindset, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. put it out there mm -hmm. and, and, and believe it. It's kind of like the old thing that your parents used to tell you, say what you mean, mean what you say, <laughs> follow through that sort of thing. Believe it. 
Um, yes, actually, I saw that. Ancient Alien just had an episode on that topic of shadow people is what he's talking about. They're also talking about the black color being from a cloaking technology and that their forms can come through completely in the visible light spectrum so they appear as a shadow of their true forms. I don't know. Have you had any um, extraterrestrial experiences, Ellie? <laughs> No, just, just, no, I haven't. Really? Um, Do you know never, for sure? No, I don't know for sure, but I've never consciously had, um, the only, look, I'll tell you, the only time I've ever thought that. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the remember, hot seat, you know. <laughs> the only time I ever thought that I had an experience with an ET was um, when I downloaded Dr. Steve, Stephen Greer, is that his name? Right. Um, yes. Right. And I did, right. And I did the meditations. I was doing the meditations and something happened and I could have sworn there was, I was visited, but you know, was it my imagination? Was I in the dream state? I don't never happened again. I've never they, seen, never seen an alien. They say that, that if you put it out there because they're being, they're telepathic beings mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. they will definitely respond to that. Have you ever seen a UFO? Um, I saw lights when I lived in Washington. Yes. But now here's the thing. I lived right next to the, I lived right next to Fort Lewis. And right, so, so I yes. thought that I still think that it was alien spacecraft. Okay. My son told me that, no, it's just a technology way advanced before, uh, right. before imagine. Right. I said, well, I don't know. We can look these up. These lights just went, they went from here like straight across like that, like just horizontal, gone like right. that in that seconds. And they came for a few days at 10 o'clock, same time in February for about three days. And then they disappeared and never saw them again. See, the theory is that only abductees or contactees can actually see the spacecraft. That there are a lot of people who actually don't see them. There have been crafts that appeared over entire cities and not everybody has seen them but abductees or contactees apparently see them, which is why I'm asking just because yeah. a lot of experiencers or contactees will be able to remote view, have telekinesis, psycho, or not psychokinesis, but telepathy. These are traits that are very strong in people who have extraterrestrial experiences. I'm just going to put that oh. out there. Just, you know, oh, sharing the info. Well, I'm going to have to have <laughs> hypnosis. Okay. And find out. All right. <laughs> Is Michelle, if I've had experiences, I have really repressed them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can hook you up with someone who does just that, actually. Um, okay. Amelia, Amelia says, is there a price to pay for all of this good luck? I don't believe so, unless you believe so. You know, if you believe that there's a price to pay, then right. we'll pay your price. I believe that... Um, when we continue to do good, be good. And when we're not talking, we're talking about doing things that are in integrity and in alignment with our integrity and our, right. our personal values. We continue to do that. Then we will continue to have good luck be bestowed upon us because we're vibrating in that frequency. Right. Right. I agree with you on that also. Uh, okay. Where are we? Dave says they have to be within your frequency range to see them. Well, that's an interesting theory as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe hard to say. There are people from all walks of life who are seeing things. Uh, this is why I don't look up at the sky. I heard too many horse race from Joe. Joe is our producer, owner of the network, and he's also the owner of the largest abductee contactee site in the world of documented cases that have over 80,000 people. Hi. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> he's got some stories to tell for sure. So, um, okay, so now we can get ourselves back on track. So um, learning how, like, children learning to connect to one another with all of these abilities, do you find that it affects their, their ability to be connected, to make connections with other people? Like, let's say the parents just you know, I, I think it is learned. I be, do believe it, it can be learned by anybody, but I mm -hmm. believe children are naturals. And some of those children will become, they'll carry it through their lifetimes. I know natural remote viewers compared to remote viewers who have been 
taught to do it or tapped back in is what I like to say. You mm -hmm. know, some people just never lose it at all. They just go, you know, full throttle. Um, do you feel that they have a better ability to connect? Oh, absolutely. If they choose to use it. So it's interesting that you ask because I... I presented at the International Remote Viewers Conference this last September, right. and I spoke about following up with five of their, their young adults now, they're in their 20s, um, mm -hmm. mid to late 20s, and they were, they were kids when I was teaching them. They grew up with this belief, wow. and um, you know, they're, they're in regular professions. Okay. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're not in extraordinary professions or anything, but one mm -hmm. of the things they do, they're very conscious. They're highly consciously aware. Mm -hmm. So one of the, one, there's one of them is a chiropractor. Another one wow. is, is, I mean, you know, they're in, they're in typical, they're in typical fields. All right. It's not like, you know, Oh, you, compare them to other kids. Yeah. Some of them went to college. Some didn't go to college. Some have businesses. Some don't. One's a, a trader, uh, definitely uses his remote viewing and intuitive abilities to make trades to, um, at, chose to do this full time. So it's, it's interesting because either, you know, you're going to use it, you're going to lose it, but it's still there. It's still there. Right. And right. so, it's a way of life. Okay. So if you have, I like to look at it as trusting your manifestation abilities. So right. that you really know, Hey, you know, and I'm a really good, I'm a powerful manifester and I know that what I want, I can get. And I know that, that, um, I can go for things. And some people don't even ever have to manifest to get mm -hmm. these abilities. They're, you know, they're raised this way and they're really fabulous manifestors. Uh, unfortunately for me, a lot of those people are still stuck in 3D, whereas these kids know that right. there's something else to dimensionality. So mm -hmm. they are very consciously aware, whereas some manifestors are fabulous, but they're manifestors in 3D. Right. Yeah, I can see that. Um, some people just being able to have the ability, you almost have to be careful what you're thinking. Um, mm -hmm. Because you, you you know you can manifest some like pretty pretty terrible things, especially if you're angry. Sometimes it's just with with a thought. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've been able to do things with a mere thought, without even giving it a thought, without even thinking that I just actually manifested something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, then you find out somewhere down the road, it's like, oh, there's there's something here, you know in this situation. This situation, I'm like, gosh, did I do that? You know, you really don't think about it. That's the problem. You manifest mm -hmm. without thought. Right. Whereas it sounds to me like you're teaching people how to manifest with a great deal of thought, Absolutely. but beyond just the physical brain. Yeah. So it's all about consciousness. consciousness. It's all about consciousness. It's about focused awareness, right. being able to take your mind and to direct it to where you want to go. So you are controlling the monkey mind, you are controlling the chatter. You know, I was right. having a conversation with my son the other day and he said, do you know that people don't know that there's inner chatter? And I there's said, inner chatter. All right. I said, yeah, but they're not aware of it. They don't know they're doing it. They don't, mm -hmm. they are, there are people who do not know that there is inner chatter going on or that they can control the inner chatter that's going on. See, that's yeah. I'll, hard, I'll for come. Me, hard for me to understand yeah. that, but I do, I, I, I know that it's true because <laughs> yes. I've worked with people who, who had that aha moment, like, oh my God, this is what it looks like to be conscious of myself speaking. These are my, and so it's, it's really fascinating to me, especially after being in this, in this, like I call it the realm, doing this work for so many mm. years that people are not aware that they have monkey mind inner chat or whatever you want to call it. I completely, I completely agree with that. Um, I remember being on a case at one point and somebody was re recording speaking with the client and my daughter wasn't well in my mind. I kept saying, oh, I just got to get home to, you know, my, said my daughter's name. And when it was played back and reversed, you could hear my voice which I never said out loud at any time, come up on the recorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I, 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 it's the only time it's ever happened to me. It's the only time I've ever heard of such a thing happening. I mean, personally, I, you know, I'm sure they're out there, but for me, it was just like uh, one of those aha moments. It was like, oh my gosh. Anyway, um, getting back, Amelia says, I appreciate you saying it's a way of life because for some, it's very difficult to turn off. Um, and natural remote viewers are often called daydreamers as children. Now, all kids daydream. So yeah. the, the, all children daydream. And we do it. We daydream too, except yes. that then children are taught not to daydream any longer. Isn't it, isn't it sad? I think that's very sad. Very sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, meditation cures the monkey mind. <laughs> I agree. Um, and Amelia, white noise helps with inner chatter. I believe yeah. so. Um, how about dement hearing things dimensionally? Because sometimes, you know, you hear things. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I could hear things, um, and I and I know I get this from a lot of people, where you're hearing conversations, you're hearing old music you're hearing mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. sound like radio broadcasting maybe you're picking up on airwaves mm -hmm. um not necessarily within your space but maybe in your space in a different mm -hmm. dimension mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. about that talking about the, the inner well, no, I mean, okay fair well, enough, I fair enough. I know that, no i know that it exists i mean yes. but i don't have an answer as to what it is you know I, look again that gets back into my personal belief which right. is that there are way more things than you and i can see and there is stuff happening between and even in my own my own home right now between right. myself and the computer there is a world right. of possibility going on in there so yeah you know it's interesting because this morning I walked into my own, into my bedroom and I smelled my mother and oh. my mom, my mom's been, she's deceased. She's passed on a few years ago. And it right. was like, there's no, there's nothing in my room that mm -hmm. belongs to her. So right. it, it's not like, oh, I got all her clothes hanging in my closet. And so I smell my mother. And right. it was like, and I have said this to my son so many times. And then when my son came to visit me, he walked into the apartment and he walked into he walked into the kitchen and he said to me, I smell grandma. And I said, I, I said, like, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, grandma? No. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to be that guy. <laughs> you know, that everybody else telling this or is it just me losing my mind. But I'm, oh my I, gosh. I can't explain that, Michelle. But it's right. it's not unusual that all of a sudden I'll I know that other people have these experiences also that we can, you know, hear or smell mm -hmm. or, and feel the presence of some of someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I have to do a very quick station ID and mm -hmm. sponsor ID. For those mm -hmm. of you just tuning in, you are listening to The Outer Realm. And our special guest tonight is Ellie Molina. And she is talking about how she teaches parents and children basically to develop their intuition and hone in on abilities such as telepathy, remote viewing, telekinesis, Yes, there is such a thing. And maybe even manifesting a buck or two. Um, so we are broadcasting live on um, the International Public Radio, United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM from the beautiful city of New Orleans. Um, our big sponsor, Folgers Coffee. Thank you. Thank you. We love you as always. Uh, been with us since day one. And we thank you for being a part of our journey. Also, Dr. Snick, aka Justin Snicker, an award-winning composer uh, for our intro and our outro. So if you are just tuning in, please head on over to UFO Paranormal Radio YouTube. And don't just subscribe become a member find out where all all the good stuff is being hidden and eventually everything will end up there so in the meantime welcome back um so here we go another question amelia is this coincidence do you believe in coincidence no i don't believe in coincidence i Same. think yeah i don't believe in it it's all um, frequency and you want to call it meant to be but i don't believe there's any coincidence yeah, I, I agree with that also. Frequency vibrations, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's energy. 
We're all energy. Everything has a frequency and a vibration. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, as does Tamara, apparently. When you raise your vibration, it's like opening a new radio station, and you'll hear things when the frequency is just right. Absolutely. Absolutely. To the commentary, Bob. Uh, I see. Yes, she's talking to Tamara. <laughs> I guess there's a whole other freaking show going on just in the chat room. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Okay, so basically, um, let's let's continue on from there. You're you're working and you're molding these minds, and you're you're helping them to develop into fine young adults who are basically manifesting their dreams. And I guess you're working them into a, a five dimensional, six dimensional reality, or <laughs> learning how to work within a learning how to live in a third dimension and still oh, manifesting sorry. whatever you want, you know, so that you can live. Uh, I don't have, I don't really have words for, for these things, quite honestly, but I look at it like this. I, I like to think back in terms of 2008, just because that was such an important year. Um, in 2008, there were many people who unfortunately had a very, very difficult time. And then there were people who knew how to work this time by being in another, you want to call it another dimension? I call it another dimension. And okay. then not only did really well, they thrived totally unaffected by any of what was happening. And um, that for me is being able to raise your consciousness so high that you, we are in another, this is where my son keeps telling me that I'm very into utopia or something, but right. we're I'm in a zone of consciousness in mm -hmm. a frequency where like knock on wood. Okay. I am unaffected by things that are going on around me. Mm -hmm. And right. I'm not the only one in this zone. Cause I got friends and I have clients. I have We're all friends. zoning in the same place. Right. <laughs> I've got friends. I got clients, you know, I have right. people that, that are in right. the same zone with me. Yes. And then we, right. Go step into third dimensionality, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I have to give it a shot. Okay, what was another one I was looking at? Uh, Luke made a good point. All right, here we go. Let's go back to Luke's comment. I manifest a thought about someone getting hurt because they hurt me. They didn't make it. Okay, and this is what Amelia was um I guess that was what well, we brought that up. That's what you were doing. Miriam lost. <laughs> I'm still beaten up by that. Oh, I see. Oh, so you manifested ill intent and that person didn't make it. Okay. Okay. I get it. I get it. I'm just trying to catch up with the other show <laughs> that's in the chat room. So, okay. Um, so where was I now? I'm just sitting here getting myself lost. Okay. There we go. You're welcome, Amelia. Um, Okay, so then the power of manifestation, obviously, you're never too old to be able to come in and take your courses. Oh, God, you offer... no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So the the program is, it's it's an online course, and it's just okay. like it's done in your home by yourself at any, you know, and you could be any, I have... I have women my age who are doing this program because I created it in such a way that it is so easy to understand that it's mm -hmm. not complicated. It's, it's for children. If they want to do it, it's for the parents with the kids and it's for us, you know, because we, we want to do this also. We want to be able mm -hmm. to work with you. And it's such an easy, simple, non-threatening way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's self it's self-paced. So you go through the exercises on your own. It's audio, it's visual. And then mm -hmm. one month I come in and I do a lesson um, with anybody who comes into the group, you, you know, it's, again, it's voluntary. No one, right. it's not school where you have to show up. But if you're interested in the topic, then uh, you come in to the midnight portal and you participate and there's a free membership, one, one month free membership for anybody who goes to my site and goes into the Midnight Portal. You have access for a month. You can join the uh, call coming up on the 23rd, with it, which is all going to be about the magic of manifestation. So anybody mm -hmm. looking for, you know, oh, let me find out how to make some money to manifest. Well, that's going to be <laughs> awful. And so... Right. 
<laughs> and, and then, you know, I'm an IT taught remote viewing. We did a remote viewing. I did a remote viewing class with, um, with a remote mm -hmm. viewer. So there's, there's ongoing support in, in the portal for the students who come in to do the class and their right. the parents and the children. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So you can come yeah. in with your child. This might be good for, for Trish mm -hmm. to try, maybe to come in with her daughter and to, right. mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like a, a parent and a child. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, Alpha State. Children come in naturally in Alpha State? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the brain, the, it's a, brain, a slower brainwave state, and we reach alpha by meditating. And children will stay into in alpha up until puberty. And then when puberty starts to happen, that's when they go into beta, and mm -hmm. they're going to have to go and meditate also So in order to get back into alpha. But one of the advantages is that when children are taught how to do this, again, Think about it like in terms of um, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So you need an anchor. So you could mm -hmm. just have an anchor. And so it could be really quick or, you know, I could say to a kid, okay, drop into, put your fingers together and drop into the zone. And then mm -hmm. because of the programming, the brain, the way it all works, the kid can do that and they can have access to that. But I want to tell a story that has... Okay, yeah. so I was doing an online psychic development course for adults, and we were in the middle of doing a remote view. And so because it was online, I put up an, a picture, just a picture of a manila envelope. And the task was I had everybody drop into alpha through a meditation. We did a group meditation. Everybody was in alpha. And on the screen was a an image of a manila envelope. And then it was time to come out of the alpha state and start to draw what the participants saw or imagined to be in the manila envelope. Okay, now it was an image. So ladies drawing something and her five-year-old kid does a walk by and he says to her, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I'm looking in that envelope. I'm seeing what's in the envelope. And he sits down and he goes, oh, that's easy. And he takes a piece of paper and he starts to draw a figure. And then when he, then he said he couldn't write yet. He wasn't, he was five or something. He goes, write down power and dragons. Well, and she said, oh, do you want to see what my son did? And he said, absolutely. Well, then I did the target reveal. And the target reveal was a picture of a figure, it was a toy of Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. <laughs> the kid had drawn the black part of Jon Snow's head. He drew a sword. He drew the figure that looked like Jon Snow and then power and dragon. Okay. Right. Was, <laughs> was the story of Jon Snow. No, I yes. mean, the kid didn't even know. All right. And yes. everybody in the group, everybody in that, in that, on that class was blown away. And I was like, this is what happens when the kids, they don't, they just know. They just, right. mm -hmm. yeah, they so, don't really have to work it. They're just natural, you know? So mm -hmm. going into beta state, maybe for those who have no idea between alpha and beta, can mm -hmm. you explain that? I yeah. guess in layman's okay. turn to make it easy for everyone else. Well, alpha is when we're when we're relaxed and meditating or when right. we're zoned out, when we're daydreaming. And that's right. when we're in alpha and we're daydreaming. Let's say you're at your job at your desk or something and you just kind of space you space out. That's yes. when you go into alpha and you get to hear things, you get to see things, you get to, you know, you pick up on impressions. Um, somebody, somebody's name comes in and then they call you five minutes later. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when we're doing what we're doing right now, we're thinking we're in our logic, we're having communicate, we're communicating with each other. That is when we're at a faster brainwave state, which is the beta state. The beta state. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about meditating, especially for, for, you know, children, young adults, should they be grounding first? 
because meditation is sort of opening yourself up. Is there a concern when you're when you're working with them that maybe something can come in and manipulate um, their thoughts or try to get into their subconscious? Or is that just more of an adult thing because we spend so much time in beta? <laughs> I don't know. We don't, we don't really, I don't go, we don't go there. So right. we go to, we go to, for example, if we're going to be doing, we, we go to tasks and we go to, let's say we're, we're working our, our, um, we're doing a project together. So we want to mm -hmm. remote you to heal. We want right. to remote you to help sure we say i call it saying a prayer putting yourself in white light protecting yourself and grounding yourself yes we do that um and then again now here's just my question and i don't have an answer for this but mm -hmm. if people have a very strong sense or belief in uh, demons again what we is it what we focus on we attract so mm -hmm. if one has a very strong sense of demons and evil and evil spirits well then there's a really high likelihood in my opinion that you're going to be pulling in from that realm i do right. not work in that realm so i don't pull in from that realm right. and I i'm not that. frightened by pulling in from that realm because they're not allowed into my realm. Right. No, I love that. Again, it just comes down to mindset. You just set your boundaries. It's the way it is. You just mm -hmm. stick to it. So how do you work with people who are, let's say you're, you're telepathic, you're hearing things. Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate what your mind's voice is? as opposed to your elevated. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is, again, do I have words for this? Not really, Michelle. But for okay. example, I call it, I go into the dark. So I no longer, I used to read for people like one-on-one -on -one like this. I would look at a person and read and do that. And that was back in the day. Um, I used to be a California psychic and uh, right. we have, we have pseudonyms when we work for California psychics. And so when I worked for California psychics, that was really where I'm going to call it. That was where the big training came because those calls come in and we have nothing to go by other than the sound of a person's voice. If that's even an indication, which it is, you know, you can, and you know a lot about a person just from the sound of their voice. Uh, but that was really, for me, that was on the ground training about, because like I said, those calls would come in, there'd be like a moment to maybe clear myself quickly, wash my hands or something, and then have that next call come in. So it was during that time, during those years that I worked for California Psychics that I realized I work better. I call it in the zone and in the dark, in the seeing. So what that looks like is when I'm doing a reading, I will not look at anybody. I go into the dark and I really, I'll, if, I, if somebody's here, I put my head down. I prefer not to have, like if I'm working with a client, I prefer not to have the computer screen on mm -hmm. and to go into the dark. I turn off the camera and I will, you know, we talk, we can record. I'll come back and look at you later. But while I'm going into the work, I go into the dark and there is, I uh, don't have words for this because it is so clear that it is not me talking because there are things that I say that I would never, ever even, like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even think of this in a million years. Like it wouldn't right. enter my mind. I don't know the client. So right. why would I be telling them about people that they know circumstances mm -hmm. using free? I don't have, uh, I don't know this. Mm -hmm. But what about for that newbie who you're trying to teach? You know, mm -hmm. you become conditioned, so you you have an understanding of which is which. What about for you know, th this this newbie coming on board and 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 they're not trusting what they're hearing because they don't know where it's coming from. They don't know is this just my own thoughts? Is this really something else? Is like right. especially with telepathy, am I really communicating with someone else or what? Am, right? right. 
I agree. And that's where you need a good mentor that to bounce it off of afterwards to have that right. conversation. So I worked with people who, you know, I have trained a couple of people that later went on to work for California psychics. And right. again, um, you know, the conversation is how do I distinguish what I'm yes. hearing and what's in my, and it's just training. And then it's training, it's confidence, it's getting that feedback. Yes, you are right. This is, you were right. The first time don't doubt yourself. This was right. So it it is practice. There's a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Amelia, how do you keep children from not pulling in? And basically it's to that realm. So I guess we're talking about the, the lower realms, the dark realms. How do you keep children from not pulling that in when you're teaching them? I, I don't know. It just never happened for me. Right. I have not had that experience out of all of these years. I have not had that experience. Oh, fantastic. Wow. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Trish is back. Uh, as far as taking Ellie's courses, I'm highly interested. My daughter works with me a lot with mediumship and intuitive art, but I'm still mom. So we need an outside coach to say focus and prevent us from communicating telepathically in chaos then Ellie will again at the end of the show tell us how how to get uh to her but if you go on the outer round page you'll find her website <laughs> so I, cheap right there I love that they communicate telepathically okay and it doesn't have you can train yourself so that it's not in chaos you know um right. I'm actually just FYI I'm in the process of writing a book right now it's a novel and the mother and son are highly telepathic and communicate with one another. And um, yeah, it's fabulous when you can do it and you're both in consent with each other so that you're not um, stepping into somebody's thoughts that they don't want you to be in. But it's fabulous when you really get to that deep connection that you are telepathically intentionally Mm -hmm. connecting. Trish, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's difficult because there are people out there who like to view or tap in when they shouldn't. <laughs> and aid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, human nature, I guess, too, right? So, um, but, but I also think that a lot of people just need to work on confidence as well. Um, I, I get asked a lot about these things, and it's like, ah, not quite my thing. So, I know I do what I can do. Um, Mm -hmm. but but it doesn't put me in a position to start teaching, you know, I'm very, very, you know, selective about my own field, but, um, definitely not in a position to teach anywhere near anything on, uh, you know, remote viewing and such. And if I'm telepathic, I communicate with other things and I do get the phone calls and things like that. You think about somebody, but definitely not on the level where people think I am. So no, not the one you want to communicate with about that. So, um, so basically then are you working on um, when people have done all your courses and you've, you know, I guess you'll get to that point where you're like, okay, you know what? There's not much more I can teach you with what I offer now almost like going from grade school and then going into high school. So what do you have for people who want to continue on, who just want to keep going the distance after you've pretty much taught them everything that you can teach them or somebody who's super gifted coming to you because they want a different perspective or to learn a different way? Well, so that's a great question. So again, I, I'm not an institution. I'm just a me, right? So nothing, nothing (laughs) institutionalized okay there's the Mm -hmm. online program which is a great introduction and i work with not everybody i work with some teens and the teens that i work with uh, we work together one-on-one with their parents in some cases and i put it's a program and it's called quantum leaping and the children that i work with are in the they have strong desires to manifest something okay they know what they want there's real clarity and so they know exactly what they want and so we work on we work on using that the we work on learning how to part the seas okay just you here's your staff and you're Mm going to go out there and you are going to part the seas you're going to make stuff happen and so now that is not, this is not a program for everyone. These are, and it's not for people who are lost and don't know what they want because 
It's not for me to tell anybody what it is that they want. But when people, when kids come to me with their parents, again, this is parent, child, this is together, and they mm -hmm. know what they want. The kid has to know what they want. Mm -hmm. Not the parent wanting for the child. Does that make sense? Like, oh, I want yes. my kid to get into this university over no. here. Can What do we do? Uh-uh. These are kids that- the person. And these are kids, you know, the few, the, and I don't work with a lot. I've only worked with a few and, you know, they've gotten amazing parts in, in Hollywood and, um, you know, they're quite, they're quite, you know, right. but they know what they knew what they wanted. Right. So they have to have the focus and they have to basically, again, it comes work. down to that, say what you mean, mean what you say, follow through. Yeah, you have to you have to do the work, and the work is all again here. The work mm -hmm. is all in the mind and in the belief that you have to do the work, and that is the same with any adult. Okay, you want if you want results, you have to do the work. It's like going to the gym. You want to have a really great, wonderful body. You want to look mm -hmm. like you're buff. You got to go to the gym. It's not going to happen by, right. you know watching a TV commercial for, you know, <laughs> right. Like, no, right. For sure. For sure. Yeah, um, so yeah. <laughs> there we go. All information and links for Ellie can be found on the outer realm Facebook page. Exactly. And Amelia uh, is reiterating the program is called quantum leaping. So I guess this is just another step above, you know, regular right. manifestation. Right. And the program for children and adults is Make Magic Happen. And that's with the Psy Kids link. Right. Which would be, they can get that on your website also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm, I'm just really, um, I'm really pleased that you came on to the show because I don't think I've ever met anyone. I've been in my own field for close to 20 years and I meet people who are truly gifted individuals who everybody branches out into so many directions, teach so many amazing things. Every time we bring people on, we're always learning something. And that's, that's what makes it that much fun because you're teaching us, you're teaching, you know, the listeners when there's a lot of listeners. Um, so it's not just what, what you see here. We have literally millions of listeners who tune into our live shows. So um, is there anything you want, everybody to know while here this is the part where you just promote everything um okay. you have a lot of you have a lot of people listening <laughs> so all right well i'm going to promote a couple of things then thank Please. you for that opportunity <laughs> Very welcome. Um, well if you really are a little um frightened of getting your feet wet um but you are curious definitely pick up my book children who know how to know it's available on amazon and it's an easy introductory book. It is for educators or parents or even anybody who wants to start to teach themselves and their children how to tap into these abilities. And it's a simple, simple book. That's number one. Number two, if you are interested, if anyone's interested in learning to do this work online in a very simple, self-paced, very gentle, loving way and has access to me, make magic happen. It's again, online program, it will never expire. Um, and you do it self paced. And I am there once a month tap in you have access to me. And that is called make magic happen. And that mm -hmm. is available at on my website under the Psy kids link. Then I've got the midnight portal, which is an online community. And anybody can join the Midnight Portal. And that's, yeah, yeah make magic happen. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just putting it up so, so the people who are viewing can actually right, see it. Right. Okay, yeah. and next. And then I offer, you know, and then, of course, I offer readings and all of that is available. Um, and Quantum Leaping, that's all available on my, on my website. But, you know, for you, if you have any inkling and you want to start to develop your psychic abilities and you don't really know how because you're scared or you're frightened, Come over to make magic happen. Doesn't matter how old you are, because there's a child in each one. We are like those nesting dolls, you know, those, and we are all ages inside of us. You know, Sandra Cisneros, fabulous author, wrote a book called a story called Eleven. And is it about a little girl who was 11 years old? And yet she went through all the emotions of being three, four, five on her 11th birthday. Fabulous oh. story. Oh. And um, beautiful, beautifully written. 
fabulous story. And so the program, Make Magic Happen, brings the magic out for us, no matter how old we are chronologically, because we're mm -hmm. still children inside. I heard something so beautiful today. Someone told me there was this woman that they know who is in an 80, actually, oh, it was my podcast guest. We were talking ah. about, <laughs> it was, we were talking about Helene Hadskill, who was known as the contest winner. She won every single contest that she ever entered. She was highly telepathic. She worked with Jose Silva from the right. Silva. Okay. And Helene was a, an 84, she was a 25 year old woman trapped in an 84 year old body. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And that was, that was Helene's energy. And so, wow. you know, getting back, so circling back to make magic yeah. happen, we can be any age chronologically and do this and make magic happen for ourselves and those around us. Right. I love it. I love it. So, okay. Well, thank you. Um, whenever you get your, your next book out, I think I, I would love to uh, have you come back on and talk Almost about that. I can't wait to finish writing this book. It's still, it's in the works. And um, it sounds can I exciting. Can I, yeah, can I just tell, share one thing? Do we still have time? Oh, any, anything you want. Oh. Yeah, we have time. Yeah. So one of my main characters, I met a guy online who looks like my main character and it just like freaked me out. And it was like, okay, this, this person is now going to be the, I'm not, it was just someone that I met randomly. Okay. But you know what? That was inspiration enough for me to like really get, get back into the book. Okay. And say, like, there are That's no crazy. coincidences, you know? So how right. does, you know, when my friend said to me, how does you know, how do you know he looks like your character? I, said, I created my character. I know what he looks like. This guy looks like my character. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I know what they're saying. I know what they're thinking. <laughs> I know what they look like. I love it. I don't think people understand that about authors. You know, mm -hmm. they already have it all worked out. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but thank you so much yeah. um, for, so for joining us thank tonight. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And we will, I'll be in touch. I'm going to email you after the show and let you know how, what the numbers uh, are like. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Bye -bye. That was a lot of fun guys. I just love her. She's just a breath of fresh air and she's just, what an amazing thing that she does for people. And Aside from the whole manifestation thing, I'm sure there's a lot of thankful people out there, but just working with children that are often misunderstood to me, I think is a gift in itself because, you know, working with families who end up again on the flip side in a, a bad situation um, and even adults who end up in a bad situation because they're not meditating properly or they're not, they're not connecting properly. Um, I think this is something a lot of people can benefit from. But, of course, we have come to the end of, of another fantastic segment of on the show. And I'm really hoping you guys all enjoy this. I know I certainly did. It was nice to have Amelia manning the fort in the chat room. A uh, big thank you to Ellie Molina for tuning in. Huge thank you to Folgers Coffee who sponsor us tonight. And every night, big thank you to Justin Snicker, a.k.a. Dr. Snick, for the intro and the outro. Please remember to stop by, subscribe, and get a membership, UFO Paranormal Radio, on YouTube. Uh, head over to the Outer Realm. Show us some love. Give us a like. Amelia really does a great job with the page. And if you'd like to contact us, only at the outer realm contact at gmail.com, the outer realm contact at gmail.com. We are booking well into the end of May into June now. So there is a bit of a wait if you're looking to get on the show or you're trying to maybe request having someone come on the show. Tomorrow night brings another really amazing guest uh, for the very first time, Dr. Mary Helen Hensley, who's going to be discussing her near-death experience after a car accident, along with reconnecting to her life's purpose and her journey to healing. This week has basically just been about really enlightening uh, topics. So I'm really hoping that you guys will tune in for that. I know you guys are going to love it. So thank you all for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow night. Hopefully.
You have been listening to The Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Pisano. Airing live every Wednesday and Thursday evening, 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 to 10 p.m. Central, on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans.